let's talk about orthogonality and projection. We'll start with orthogonality. I've written here a little fill in the blank thing, and I want you to think about this for a moment. See if you can come up with the answer. Now you might be seeing this word orthogonal here and asking, well, what is orthogonal? I haven't defined that yet. Really, orthogonal is just a fancy word for perpendicular. We'll give a precise definition in terms of dot product in just a moment. But first I want us to think about what I've written here. So intuitively, u and v are going to be orthogonal if and only if the angle between them, the small angle between them, is 90 degrees. Or if you like radians, if and only if the angle is pi over 2. But this is the same thing as saying that the cosine of the angle between them is zero because remember the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. We use this therefore as our definition because we know how to relate the cosine of the angle between two vectors with the dot product of those two vectors. So we define we define the term orthogonal as follows. We say that u and v are orthogonal if their dot product is zero. For example, we can ask if the vectors u equal 1, 2, 3, and v equals 1, 1, minus 1 are orthogonal. Well, to check this, we don't have to go through this figuring out the whole angle thing. All we need to do is take the dot product of the two vectors, u dotted with v, is 1 times 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 3 times negative 1 or minus 3. So this is 3 minus 3 which is 0 so therefore yes the two vectors u and v are indeed orthogonal. And this now brings us to a theorem. Yay. Okay so this is called the Pythagorean theorem in Rn. Let's see if we can prove it. Well, on the one hand, oh, before I do that, I want to mention, so side note, whenever I have the norm of a vector squared, that's the same as saying I'm taking the square root of u dotted with u and I'm squaring it. But the square and the square root cancel them out to give u dotted with u. Okay, now with that in hand, let's go and see if we can understand this theorem. Well, the norm of u plus v squared, by what I just wrote over on the side, is u plus v dotted with u plus v. Then using theorem 1.2b, the distributive property part of the theorem, this is u dotted with u plus v dotted with u plus u dotted with v plus v dotted with v. But this guy here, v dot u, and this guy here, u dot v, are both zero. And that's because u and v are orthogonal. So using what I have on the right again over here to turn u dot u into the norm of u squared and v dot v into the norm of v squared, I get the norm of u 
squared plus the norm of v squared, which is exactly what I wanted. And this is the proof of the theorem. All right, our next order of business is to talk about projections. So, okay, what do I mean? Well, let's take a look at a couple of vectors here. And let me rewrite those um, about like this. I'll call this guy V and I'll call this guy U. Then what I want to look at is, okay, if I take an altitude down to here and I look at this guy here, so I have a right triangle and I want this leg, and I'm gonna call that leg P. And my goal is to find P, find an expression for P in terms of U and V only. To make things simpler in terms of our explanation, I'm going to assume that our angle between the two vectors is acute for simplicity. But everything that I'm going to say works in the general case. Okay, let's start doing this. Well, to start with, we notice that u and p have the same direction. Therefore, the normalizing vector or the unit vector in their directions are the same. So therefore, u divided by the length of u is p divided by the length of p. Or in other words, if I solve for p, we get that p is the length of p times u over the length of u. Okay, well this is beginning in the direction of finding stuff in terms of just u and v. So we are left now to figure out what is this guy? What is the length of p in terms of u and v only? Well, to do this, we're gonna use some trig. So let's use some trig. Looking at the triangle over here, we see that v, the length of v, is going to be the hypotenuse, and the length of p is going to be the leg, and theta is the angle between them. So we can write the length of p as the length of v times the cosine of that angle between them. But remember, theta is also the angle between v and u, and so we can use our angle formula in terms of the dot product and length to get rid of this theta and rewrite this as the length of v times u dotted with v divided by the length of u times the length of v. And we can notice that this v here and this v here are going to cancel out. So putting this formula together with this one, we get that P is equal to U dotted with V over the length of U times U over the length of U. Or using what we have up here, this is the dot product of u dotted with v divided by u dotted with u times u. And this is the formula we're going to use for our definition of projection. The projection of v onto u is written proj sub u of v and is defined to be u dotted with v 
divided by u dotted with u times u. All right. Let's do an example. Let's have u equal minus 1, 1, 0, and v equal to 1, 2, 3. And we want to compute the projection of v onto u. The projection of v onto u using the formula that we just gave over here, the definition here, is going to be u dotted with v over u dotted with u times u, which is, let's see, minus 1 plus 2 plus 0 divided by 1 plus 1 plus 0 times minus 1, 1, 0, which is, let's see, this is going to be 1 over 2 times minus 1, 1, 0, which is a perfectly fine final answer. But if you want, you can bring the 1 half inside and write this as minus 1 half, comma 1 half, comma 0. Both of these would be perfectly acceptable final answers.